Hi everyone, I'm Stefano from Soto Zen Channel. Welcome to this new video tutorial. I will show you how to create and animate this little nice ghost, this guy here, using some cloth simulation inside Blender. I assume that you have somehow the basic knowledge of the 3D software, but beside that, don't be worried because this is intended to be a basic tutorial. I will uh, help you uh, during the video step by step. But before we start, I really want to talk with you guys about two important things that just happened. The first one is that this channel just reached 500 subscribers and that's just awesome. And let me say grazie di cuore. That means that I really appreciate your enthusiasm and that I want to thank you, each one of you for this. But there's more. The second one is that this video is the first one associated to my new Patreon project. You probably know how much I love 3D animation, VFX and filmmaking. I worked as a cartoonist and 3D animator for many advertising agencies here in Italy in the past. And then I decided to work for myself and recently I created my Sotuzen channel where I constantly upload my creative contents. And because I want to invest even more time and energy on this, I invite you to visit my page and consider becoming part of this new adventure of mine. For example, if you join this Zen Team tier, you will get instant access to all my Blend Files project and 3D models that I will create on my tutorial. Also, we will meet on a monthly live stream that I will make only for you. And all my patrons will be recognized on the end credit of every each video I will make. And finally, to somehow reward the first five brave patrons, I will give you this badass alien tripod that I recently made and used on my animation. It's a fully rigged 3D model that I will give to my first five patterns. So thank you so much for listening to this kind of self-promoting message. I really hope to see you guys there. And now let's start our tutorial. So here we are in Blender and I am currently using the version 2.91. Let me um, turn on the screencast keys so you guys can better see what I'm doing. And the first thing I want to do is to select the camera and the default lamp and get rid of them. And instead we will save the default cube for once. In orthographic view let me move this object here above the floor plane and what we need now is a simple object that will drive our uh, cloth simulated mesh later. So I need something like a sphere and instead of getting the mesh, the UV sphere, I prefer to get a sphere starting from the cube because the topology that we will get is uh, way better and more clear. So in order to do this we want to add a subdivision surface modifier and we can do that pressing Ctrl and then choosing the level of subdivision. In this case I use 3. If we go under the uh, modifier stack we can see this subdivision surface modifier and if we enter now edit mode pressing tab we see that we get the original cube topology and this is not what we want so we need to apply this modifier here now that we have applied if we enter again edit mode you can see that its topology has been changed perman permanently. And you can see that it looks like a sphere, but it is not a perfect one. And in order to get a perfect one, we need another modifier, the cast modifier. So let's select it and let's change this factor value to one. We can now apply this modifier beca because we won't use this any longer. And we have now a perfect sphere with 
clean quartz topology out of the default cube. Let's now turn this X-ray option on, enter edit mode once again, and with Ctrl and 1 we want to be in vertex selection mode. And by the way, you can see here the free uh, selection mode and you can switch between them pressing Ctrl 1, 2 or 3. Let's deselect everything and let's box select this bottom half of our mesh. Pressing G and Z, I want to get some shape, something like this. You don't have to be very precise here, but try to have something similar, something like this. It's okay. And with Ctrl R, I want to add back two edge loops in order to restore somehow the uh, original uh, topology resolution for this object here. Let's turn off this X-ray and pressing F2 we can give a proper name to our object. Let's call OBS for obstacle and then body. Now because we know that this object won't be rendered during our animation we can go now in its object properties and under visibility let's turn off this renders option here. So now let's recenter the pivot point of our cube here. Go in object, set origin to geometry, it's okay. And now I want to move the cursor to this center here, pressing shift S. I choose cursor to select it. And in this position with shift A, I will add an empty object, a sphere empty object and I want it to be a little bit bigger maybe it's too much something like this and this empty object will be our controller our main controlling object for the animation that we are going to do to our ghost so let's call this properly CTR for control and then ghost and we want to parent our cube object to this empty object. So I select my cube and then I shift select the controller and I press Ctrl P set parent to object. Now if I move around my empty object the mesh will follow. Let's recenter our cursor to the uh, 3D world position pressing shift and C. Okay it's time now to uh, create our cloth object and I will use a mesh circle object and I want to increase the default resolution to something like 64. Let's move this object somewhere up here above our obstacle and then pressing S I want to scale it something like this. If I press N into the item menu here you can see that we alter it, the scale value. Every time you do so remember to Ctrl A and apply the scale value back to 1. This is always a good habit to have when working with 3D simulation or in general. So now we want to enter edit mode and pressing F we can fill with a with a single end gone our circle and pressing I I want to inset my selection and scale it very small something like this and now pressing Ctrl R let's add some edge loop in order to have some resolution in this object here let's call this object uh, ghost cloth and we are now ready to set our cloth collision we know that this object will be our obstacle so here under this physics tab here we want to check collision and we can leave all these default options like they are they are fine let's select back our uh, cloth object itself and let's enable cloth if we now play our simulation we can direct see that our object is way too short we want this cloth to be longer so so let's select 
our object, press S and Shift Z to enable the scaling only on the X and Y axis. And let's make this object bigger. And since we have done another scale operation, we want to apply the scale factor back to one. So let's try our simulation once again. And we can see that it is now fine. But in order to have a nicer cloth deformation, we need more resolution. I forgot to mention that the reason why I subdivided this object is because in cloth simulation, we need a decent face resolution in order to have a good deformation. So more are the vertices involved in our simulation, better will be the result at the cost, of course, of a higher uh, time consuming calculation from Blender. Let's right click and choose subdivide. And let's see what we have. You can see that the simulation is way slower than before, but we get something more nice. Okay, what I want to do now is to right click to shade smooth our object. And you can see that we have many intersection here. So the first important thing that we have to set in our cloth simulation is to check this self collision option. In this way, Blender will calculate also the vertices to collide between themselves. So with our first attempt of simulation, you can see that we have two uh, big issues. The first one is that our cloth object is slowly sliding away from our collision object. And this is not what we want. And the second one is that in this area, some mess is going on. So let's see how to fix these two issues here. So in order to avoid the mess that's going, that's happening in this area, we will isolate the vertices where the self collision will happen. And to do this, we have to create a vertex group. So let's press tab, enter edit mode, control one, we want to be in uh, vertex selection mode. Pressing alt, I select this vertex loop and pressing control and plus, we want to add vertices to our selection. And I think that something like this is what we need because it's more important that the self collision is calculated on the part of the cloth that are going down instead of this area that is that will be very smooth because it only collides with the sphere and there's no much self collision around these vertices here. So Let's create a vertex group. Let's press this plus button here and let's click assign. I will call this group no self collision. So let's go back to our object and in our cloth self collision properties, we have this vertex group and you have to pay attention because you may think that this vertex group is where the self collision will happen, but instead, if you read the description, it's the opposite. So the vertex that we select will not be influenced by the self collision calculation. So let's select our vertex group here and let's try our simulation once again. And you can direct see that the mess that was happening before is no longer there. And also, by the way, this cloth object is no longer sliding. So let me set the end frame of my project to 100. And let's center this timeline here. So now what we get here is this first attempt of simulation. And for sure, we don't need this at the beginning of our animation later. So we will use this only to choose the uh, starting shape for our ghost. So let's say that something around here is nice. And by the way, don't be 
to alarm about this issue here, we will fix. What we want to do is to go here in the modifier stack and apply our cloth simulation. So now our object is no longer simulated. Let's fix now this um, bad uh, mesh issues here. I will use this move modifier, but I will focus this modifier only in this uh, head area here. So let's enter edit mode. I press Alt and then I select this uh, vertex loop and then I increase my selection in the way that I am sure I cover the area where, where this mess is happening. And then I go here and I want to create a new vertex group. I will call this smooth. Let's assign them. Then back to object mode in the modifier, I choose smooth. Now the smooth is applied to all the mesh. Let's select our smooth vertex group and then increasing this value slowly. You can see that we fix the problem something like this. Let's apply direct this modifier we don't need anymore. And in order to smooth evenly a little bit more also the rest of our object, let's apply another one smooth modifier this time upon all our mesh. Just to relax a little bit more the mesh. We need now to add two holes here for the eyes in order that our ghost can see. And before I am going to do that, I want to add some resolution around this area because you can see that the, the face has more rectangular shape than a square. So let's with Ctrl R add some additional loop cuts here. I think something like this is enough. Maybe another one here. So in front autographic view, we want to select where our hole will be, pressing C and let's select, for example, something like this. So let's press X and delete these faces here. And now in edge selection mode, I press Alt and I select all the entire loop here. So now pressing Shift, Alt and S, I can make this a sphere, a circle in this case. And I want now to scale a little bit on the X axis to give the whole and more an oval shape. So let's do the same for the other side. You don't need to be precise or symmetrical. We don't need this. So something like this. Let's get rid of the let's get rid of the faces and then select our edge loop and once again shift alt s Let's make a circle and then S scale a little bit on the X axis. So we finally have our little ghost base mesh ready to be simulated and animated. But let's add also some thickness to this ghost cloth here. And we can do this by adding a solidify modifier. Let's check this even thickness and also under normals let's turn on this high quality option and you see that we have some shading issue here and to avoid this let's add another loop cut here and move it near the end of our cloth object. So let's make a simple animation test to see if it's working or not. Um, what I want to do is to select my cloth object and I want to parent it to my empty sphere controlling object. So Ctrl P, set parent to object. And I see that I have somehow disabled my screencast key. So let me turn it on again. Uh, sorry about that. And now we have this simple hierarchy that 
controls everything and I want to create a new window here and I want to change this to graph editor. We will create a very simple animation just to test the behavior of our cloth. So let's press I to insert a location and rotation keyframe at the first frame on our timeline and then let's move forward to, to the frame 20 maybe and we can make it move here and maybe rotate a little bit in this way and I press another keyframe. We can frame our function curve here to see it better and we have this very very simple animation. So let's try to give the cloth simulation back to our object. So we have to go here and click on cloth simulation. We want also to give back the self collision option because we need for sure and we still have is a uh, no collision vertex loop that we created before. Let's select this. So let's give it a try. If we play our animation, it's way too slow because maybe I forgot this one thing. In order to improve our performance, we can disable the solidify modifier for now. Let's try again. And you can see that even if we have parented the cloth object to our animation controller, the uh, cloth is sliding away. It's not remaining in on its position. So let's fix this problem and it's easy to do. We only need to create a new vertex group, select this edge loop and grow the selection maybe to something like this. And on the vertex group section here, I want to press plus to add a new one. And this name, I will call this pin. Let's assign them. Let's go back to object mode. We can also enlarge a little bit our window here. And in the cloth simulation panel under uh, shape, we have this pin group that allow us to pick our vertex group. And this pin group tells Blender that all the vertices inside this selection here won't be affected by the cloth simulation. So if we try to play our simulation once again, you can see that we start to have something better. It is not what we want for because it flies away, but you can see that the cloth itself is no longer sliding to the ground. And that's because of this pin vertex group that allow to stay in position all these vertices. And by the way, I think that we made it a little bit too big. Let's reduce the uh, pin vertex itself. And to do this, let's select the pin vertex group. Uh, maybe with these vertices selected, let's click on remove. Let's try our simulation once again. Yes, and you can see that it's more than enough to make it stick to our animated object. But we have to fix now this because later maybe we want to animate even in a more extreme way our object here. So we have to find a way to avoid this cloth object to be flipped upside down or fly away. An easy way to do this is to go back here on the cloth panel and at the end we have these field weights. And the first one is the gravity set to one by default. Let's try to increase this to maybe six. And you can see direct that now the cloth is behaving very differently because essentially increasing this value. So I think that we are getting close to have something more useful for the animation process. But let's try a little bit more extreme test. So I deleted all the keyframes from the previous animation and I want to try to make this object to have a 360 degrees twist. So I want to insert a rotation keyframe at the first frame on my timeline I'm going, I'm going forward 
oh, I forgot, you cannot go around your timeline when your cloth simulation is working because Blender is attempting to simulate at every moment. So in order to animate your controlling object, we have to go here in the modifier stack and disable on the viewport our cloth simulation, clicking on this monitor icon here. So let's go back to our frame 20 or maybe 24 and let's press R and Z to rotate this wall around. So now we have this kind of animation. Let's activate back our cloth simulation and you can see that it seems that it's working fine but what's happening here is that the cloth is not able to follow fast enough the movement of our object and this is because the underneath obstacle is sliding away so we have to select our obstacle and I'm going in this collision uh, properties here under soft body and cloth tab we want to increase this friction value and want to increase to something more high so I don't remember what I used in my original animation but I think it was something 200 maybe oh no the maximum is 80 so let's put it so let's put the friction to the maximum value of 80 and if we try again You can see that we have a totally different behavior and our eyes holes here has returned to their starting position or almost and for one extreme test like this one I think that is good enough. Of course you can play around with many of these settings, with the friction, the stiffness also of the cloth. There are a lot of other parameters that you can tweak and try to play with, but let's say that we are happy with this result. So you can see here that in my final animation I have this uh, light that is uh, um, coming from the inside of the ghost and it gives this nice uh, reflection on the ground and then also we have uh, the ghost eyes that are glowing and also I added a simple blanket texture to make it a little bit more cartoonish and funny but this is optional so let's see how to do this project here yeah the first thing that we want to do is to set up I like to create a new collection where I usually put my camera and light in the scene. So let's split this window here in half and we want to add with shift A a camera and pressing zero on the numpad let's enter the camera view and under this view option for the camera I want to check this, uh, no sorry here, uh, the view lock, I want to check this uh, camera to view. In this way we can now easily frame our little character here. And then I like to switch this off once again. In this way if I accidentally move my cursor or I orbit, I don't lose the camera set the camera setting. Let's also go here under viewport display this passport to value. Let's set this to one in order to have this nice black frame around our camera view. And by the way most of the time I like to turn off this uh, um, show overlays option that we have here for the camera view in order to see uh, a better version of what's going on on the camera and yeah, let's add a floor object, so shift A, I enter direct in edit mode for this plane object here, I can scale on the X axis maybe 10 times and then I select this edge and I move it forward and this one I move it backward, then I press E to extrude and Z 
to move it upward and then with this one selected Ctrl B I want to add a nice and smooth bevel let's go back to object mode right click to shade it smooth and we can give this very basic and dark material so let's switch to render option and we can't see anything because our scene doesn't have any kind of light source so let's fix this uh, by adding um, an environment texture so we will lit our scene using some HDRI map that you can get from sites like uh, HDR Haven I will use this linear park and now I select once again my floor object you can also name this floor pressing F2 I want to have less specular and uh, some kind of roughness something like this and by the way on the render settings I by default I have EV as render engine I have this uh, ambient occlusion option on I have the bloom option on because this will help us later with our gloves then I turn on the screen space reflection with the refraction option also and nothing here and under the color management I always use this high contrast look to have the black more black and more cinematic view and then what we need now to do is to add an area lamp and let's move this here inside our ghost and I want to parent this lamp to our main controlling object in the settings of the lamp let's turn on contact shadow we can change maybe a little bit the color and we want to increase the power something like this so let's create now the glowing effect for this eye socket that we have here and I just want to add a simple UV sphere that we can place let's switch to wireframe mode that we can place here in the middle something like this I want to then enter edit mode and in face selection mode I choose only these two uh, center face loop and pressing ctrl I, I invert the selection and I delete all the other faces in solid view I want to select maybe this area and once again I invert the selection to get rid of the other faces and let's now move the origin to the geometry and we can a little bit rotate a little bit more and then I want to bring this inside and let's control P parent to uh, the control object once again I have my screen cast keys disabled I don't know why so let's turn it on again and uh, now we have everything in place what we want to do now is to add a simply emission node material so emission let's change maybe a little bit the color and let's increase this value here let's see on render view we can increase this power here if we now play our animation everything should be uh, working but I'm afraid that we have s still something to fix you will see what you see that the eyes the eye socket on the cloth are moving around too much and in this way is too difficult to have the glowing effect following them in the right way so what I want to do in order to fix this is to select my cloth object enter edit tab select these vertices around the eyes and maybe I want to increase the selection to have this area all selected and I want to add all these new vertices 
to the vertex group. So let's click on assign. So if we play now our animation, we finally have some nice uh, result. We can now try to animate our object and see how our cloth is following. So let's select this object and delete all the keyframe, select our cloth object and disable the cloth simulation operator here. And we want to have something similar to the original little animation that I prepared for you. Let's select this, rotate 90 degrees and we want him to start outside of the camera view. I to insert location and rotation keyframe and once again we have to turn on the screen cast keys one again so here we are and let's have him to move forward to the center of the camera during the first 24 frames also we want to have a little bit rotation of his body something like this and I don't remember exactly how I animate it, but let's do something like this. Then I want him to go back and turn to the camera, little pause, and then he quickly turn on the left side to see what's going on. and then all the way on the other side let's see what we have so far let's make this a little bit longer 200 frames when he arrive here maybe this a little bit longer and then want him to go back to the camera let's prepare for the jump and let's quickly have him fly away okay very very simple animation but we have to think that later the cloth animation will add a lot of dynamic effect to the to its movement. So 120 frame and that's what we have so far. We forgot to set the floor object as an obstacle as well. So we have to go here and set this collision on. Let's, let's try again. And I think it's almost working only. I can see that in this moment we have some uh, problem with the object collision of our cloth simulation. So to avoid this, I think we can try to under collision to increase the quality steps let's try six let's see if this helps and yes you can see that it improves our uh, collision quality so a few things we still have to do and the first one is to turn on the thickness back give back the thickness to the object so here we can activate back the solidify modifier be sure to have the solidify modifier uh, after the cloth simulation one blender will simulate the cloth and then add the thickness otherwise it will have to compute more data uh, the problem is with this solidify option here you can see that we have in some frames this kind of issues here 
and I noticed that this is caused by this even thickness option that is a good one to turn on when dealing with this but in this case we have to turn it off to get rid of this problem and now we have our ghost animated and cloth simulated in a nice way one last thing I have done I have added a simple texture to my object so let's bring up this area here and change to shader editor and we want to add a new material for our ghost and because this video is already quite long let's keep this texturing process very basic one image to the color I found this texture on 3dtexture.com we need to UV unwrap very simply our object so I want to select this edge loop Ctrl E mark sim and then select everything and simply unwrap our mesh and you can see wait. and we have to recalculate everything I'm afraid and here finally we have our animation and simulation in place working nice and I think that we can say oh mm, maybe one last thing I remember I have done on my original animation was to yes here I added some subsurface to the uh, cloth material with the color turned into some yellowish something like this to uh, simulate the, the light that comes from the inside of the ghost and one last thing you can uh, put all your simulation into cache using this current cache to bake so now you have baked all your uh, simulation data and okay guys that's it i really hope that you enjoyed this video and if so please subscribe hit the like button or leave a comment maybe with some question that you may have regarding this topic and before leaving you i invite you of course to visit my main channel Soto Zen and once again I invite you to support me in this new adventure that I am beginning with you all guys visit my new Patreon page and consider becoming part of my community as always I thank you for watching have a great day and see you soon with another great tutorial ciao